you so much. I am, I'm just tickled to be here uh, today. So if I can just jump right into, uh, into youth and philanthropy. Uh, may I ask, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know Zoom and I have a bit of a contentious uh, relationship, so just to make sure. We know that um, an emerging consensus regarding Africa and sustainable, the Sustainable Development Goals is that investment in African philanthropy is critical, and it's critical for sustainable impact. And we also see that this was highlighted in the African Union's agenda um, 2063, and also in several other regional and national development documents on the continent. But paradoxically, not only has Africa fallen behind our sustainable development goal targets, but the state of institutional philanthropy on the continent is comparatively rudimentary with very little known about youth in particular. Therefore, the potential of the youth as a source of community change is largely unrecognized. So here, we also find that the institutional mechanism for engaging them, and that is the private foundations, those foundations that we've known, that we've studied, that to engage with youth, we find that so far they've performed only marginally. And this is due to, uh, to a lot of woes, such as the lack of resources, um, poor capacity, um, lack of coordination perhaps. Indeed, the full extent of the involvement of foundations with the youth, it remains unclear. And in, in researching this area, it is less easier, less easily um, collected and read about. But on the other hand, they, the foundations, the foundations that have involvement with the youth, they focused on areas mostly such as governance. We see they focus on constitutionalism. We also see a lot of focus on higher education and advocating transparency. And most recently, we've also seen a lot of focus on illicit financial flows. Therefore, there are several knowledge gaps about youth philanthropy and private foundations involvement with youth in Africa. So before we proceed any further, I'd like to take a quick look at what youth philanthropy may be considered. And I, I take the light in the definition of youth philanthropy presented by a, a young philanthropist, only 14 years old at the time, Maya Saru. Now, she succinctly describes youth philanthropy as a movement. She describes it as a movement where kids and teens come together to change the world. And she adds that youth philanthropy brings about the idea that the youth don't have to wait until they're older to make a difference. And also that they don't have to rely on their parents, um, their garden, guardians, or um, older adults to make a difference in this world. According to the 14-year-old Maya, youth philanthropy is the notion that the new stream of visionaries are looking to change the world but also to change their thoughts and with a sense of urgency. And that's what I like, the sense of urgency. So 
Now that I've, I've articulated a general understanding of youth philanthropy, we can better understand the knowledge gaps that, um, that, I, that I raised previously. And these are the gaps in youth philanthropy generally, and particularly with private foundations engagement with the youth in Africa. So with these knowledge gaps, there's a certain situation that is, that is created. And these situations, they, they prompt three important questions, three key questions for us to think about. The first one, how does one critically and comprehensively assess the current state of youth philanthropy in Africa in relation to development in other developing regions and elsewhere? The next pressing question that this, the knowledge gap poses is what role can private foundations play in the development of youth philanthropy in Africa? And this is in light of the sustainable development goals. And then the last pressing question is, what kind of adult citizens? And this is important. What type of, what kind rather, of adult citizens does Africa envisage today's youth to be as leaders and social change agents? And following, how can youth in philanthropy contribute to achieving this goal? Now, in the US, for example, where youth philanthropy, the youth philanthropy move, movement has been active and documented explicitly for at least the last two decades. We see that development programs have been combined with classroom education and hands-on project, projects. And this approach encourages the youth to become active agents for building strong democratic communities, to also promote youth service and giving, as well as to nurture them to develop into productive, but not only productive, productive and self-aware adults. In China, for instance, which much like Africa, combined indigenous culture with neoliberal rationalities, we find that government has provided not only policy support, but also public media campaign infrastructure. And this has encouraged philanthropic education by publishing ideologically relevant, but also culturally, culturally sensitive textbooks. So we see that in the end, the youth in these situations are reported to have improved their ability to apply their academic activities to the real world. So undoubtedly, undoubtedly, youth in philanthropy projects enhance the life skills while providing the opportunity of the youth to give back to their communities. A useful perspective is to adapt one that considers children and youth to be treated not as future leaders, but as citizens in their own right. And as citizens to contribute to the sustainable development goals now, as well as in the future. And what I find interesting is another perspective can be that now, and this relates to the sense of urgency, now is the time to allocate resources and intentionality to trigger the full potential of the youth. But since the full extent of the foundation's engagement with the youth, with the youth is unclear. And also because previous research 
in Africa on the scene is hardly available. That means that high quality and comprehensive research in this area is highly warranted. Our own research at CAPSI, our own research here shows that there evidently is a strong link between private foundations and the three pillars of sustainable development. Therefore, future research must address how this link accommodates youth philanthropy. And we need to do this to enhance the achievement of the continent's sustainable development goal targets. So a practical implication is that the outcome of such research must enable us to adapt the best practices from elsewhere in the world. Thus, two fees for the research on youth philanthropy in Africa are recommended. And these are themes that I'm actively involved in researching at present. The first one has to do with assessing the youth in philanthropy landscape in selected African countries. And then the next one has to do with private foundations, youth philanthropy, and sustainable development in Africa. Now, I'm almost over my time, but I just get so excited when I start to discuss youth, particularly within the realm of philanthropy. So in closing, I would like to apply the words of David Rubenstein, who's a well-known philanthropy with active, philanthropist rather, and he has active interest in African philanthropy. Now, I'd like to apply his words to the African continent. Mr. Rubenstein suggests that philanthropy is not merely a Greek word meaning loving humanity or rich people writing checks, but rather a reflection of an extraordinary continent, Africa. It's a reflection of an extraordinary continent with extraordinary people, citizens, and that's our youth giving back to the continent and not just taking from the continent. Thank you.